Hello, welcome to Color Caboose Creations. Today's video is my entry for the Ugly Duckling Challenge. I absolutely love these challenges. They are so much fun. Hosted by Corey from Desert DIY. This one happens to be extra special because Corey had a roll call for all furniture flippers here on YouTube and there was so many people that answered that call. Right now, there is a growing playlist of almost 50 participants. So please check out the link I'll have in my description for the full playlist. All of these wonderful transformations are definitely going to be a treat to watch. So here's my project. I know it's a little strange. I mean, what do you even call this thing? I just knew I had to see it in person and I'm so glad I did because you're not going to believe what it looks like now. Well guys, this is not the normal kind of thing that I purchased, but for some reason I was just drawn to it. I couldn't figure out what it was, if it was the top of a hutch, if it was an armoire. I needed to see it in person though, and I'm so glad I did. The lady I purchased it from had received it from a neighbor who passed away, and she was intending on refinishing this herself, but this is as far as she got. Upon inspecting it, I could tell that it probably had water damage at some point. The drawers were kind of sticky. The fronts drug a little bit, as well as the interior drawers. But these interior drawers are what really caught my eye. Because in the photos, I thought this would make an awesome child's play armoire. Only one problem. It ended up being a lot taller than what I expected. Here's some reference for you. I'm only 5'2". This piece was definitely screaming for a more modern makeover. So I gathered up a bunch of elements that I've been wanting to try. One was the use of cane webbing. I like the way it looks in the fronts of doors. And then another was this deep, rich, green, earthy olive tone that I've been dying to play with. As for the base, it may have had one at some point or it may have had legs that were missing. So I knew I was going to have to build something. I also wanted to stick with a more earthy fall vibe, so I thought about incorporating either leather or wooden drawer pulls. All these elements I gathered up together and created myself my own mood board. I love the way it looked collectively, so this is what I decided to go with. If you're like me and tend to veer off track very easily, I recommend creating a mood board for your next project. This decorative molding had its time and place, but it was just way too dated looking for the modern look I was going for. I attempted to remove the top of this piece, but that didn't work out, so I tried to pry off the molding as best I could with only being able to get bits and pieces. I tend to be fairly comfortable with my jigsaw, so I reached for that tool and then tried to trim it in place. The jigsaw did not allow me to get a very even cut, so I opted to use my little mini circular saw instead and was able to get a more accurate cut for the top and bottom. This just goes to show you it's really important to use the proper tool. For those last little bits of molding that I was not able to reach with my circular saw, I just hand trimmed them with my Japanese hand saw and was able to get a nice flush cut. The bottom part of this piece was a little compromised maybe due to water damage at some point so I did have to cut it just about half an inch deeper on each side. As I started trimming it off I was having a lot of wood kind of break off 
and I just needed to cut deeper so I got to a more sturdy platform. Going over this piece, I did discover why many of the drawers were sticking, and it's because several of these wooden glides were either split, broken off, or worn down. I found a piece of wood that was slightly thicker at Lowe's, so I just kind of sanded it down to where it needed to be. I did use the old glides as a template, so I knew exactly where to drill the holes on the new ones. The main body was now prepped, cleaned, and repaired, ready for some paints. Before you start judging me, look at the wood on this piece. It's mostly made out of poplar, and the manufacturer had originally painted it as well, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. I needed to put a base coat of primer first. This Extreme Bonding Primer by Sherwin-Williams is quickly becoming my favorite. This was my very first attempt ever using cane webbing, and I was a little shocked to see the price of this stuff. So in my attempt to be a little conservative, I just purchased enough for this project. Or so I thought. Once I rolled it out on this door face, I happened to be one inch short of what I needed. So instead of just cutting out that whole window of the door, I decided to inset it by one inch on the top and the bottom and half an inch on the sides just giving me enough room to attach it and also add a little bit of trimming for a kind of a double frame effect. The decorative trim on the fronts of these doors did not match the modern look I was going for, so I filled them in with Bondo and sanded everything nice and flush. Unlike the rest of the piece, these trim pieces on the doors were actually part of the structure so they couldn't be removed. I also trimmed off those little pieces of wood that were going to frame over the caning on the insets of the doors. This Sherwin-Williams Extreme Bonding Primer is really great stuff. After it dried for a couple hours, look at me. I'm scratching it with my thumb and I'm scratching it really hard. There's nothing coming off. I decided to go with Melange paint in the color Oak Moss for the entire cabinet. I just love this deep, rich, yummy green color. Any greens in that matter, I just love green. <laughs> Here's after the first coat. It does look very streaky, but you can't always judge a paint based on its first coat. So while that was drying, I decided to soak my cane webbing. It's recommended that you soak this for at least an hour before you apply it to your piece. By the time everything was ready to be put back together, it was already starting to get dark, so I had to move quickly. I just applied the cane webbing to the door frame with my staple gun. Once that was in place, I used a thick layer of wood glue put those trim pieces in place and attach them down with brad nails. Now the cane webbing did feel slightly loose to me, but everything I read said to just leave it overnight and it'll kind of tighten up. Thankfully, it did that. It was nice and tight. It felt professional. The only thing that didn't look professional was this gap along the side. So I filled that in using a little bit of paintable caulking. You do have to make sure this stuff is paintable. Once that was completely dry, I sanded it down nice and smooth and then touched up everything with paints. So I'd like to share a little trash to treasure story with you about these legs. A few months back on my way to work, I happened to notice this dresser that was sitting outside an apartment complex in front of a dumpster. It looked to be in fairly good shape, so I went around to examine it a little further and when I got there, I noticed that the matching bed frame was also left out. The frame happened to be a full-size bed. Nobody really buys those anymore, but I decided to take it home because I couldn't see it going to landfill. The dresser was in excellent shape, 
I did refinish it and since then it has sold, it lives in its forever home, it got a really cool transformation. As for this bed frame though, I knew it would be a hard sell, but it happened to be solid walnut. So I took it apart and I've had the wood kind of sitting, stacked up, ready for a project such as this. So I utilized this wood to make this base. This is not anything exciting. It's the base that everybody's been copying from DIY Wife. I constructed it her ways. Please check out her YouTube channel if you want to figure out how to make this base. So after it was constructed, I sanded it all down. I sealed it up with Odie's oil to bring out the natural luster of that wood. And voila, we had a new base from an old bed frame. There was a little piece of the original manufacturer's tag still left on the back, so I wanted to preserve that as best I could. I sealed it in place using about three coats of my homemade shellac, and I also decided to shellac the entire back of this cabinet. I did clean it, but I didn't sand it down because I wanted to preserve some of that original character of this piece. Even though the rest of the cabinet is getting a full makeover, I didn't want to erase the history completely. The drawers of the cabinet were actually in really great shape. You know, as much as I do not like contact paper, I hate to admit it actually does a great job in protecting the wood surface. The outside of the drawers were probably the roughest looking part. Half the stain was worn down for rubbing against the sides of the cabinet. So I decided to just sand them down all the way to bare wood and leave them a natural wood surface. The front part of the drawers had some minor scratches, but I also decided to sand those down to bare wood. So I had a more cohesive look on the outside and then I left the inside as it was. This gave it a really cool looking two-tone effect. I also went over and hand sanded where the glides would be rubbing up against another wood surface so that there was no kind of splintering that would catch. And then I sealed everything up with a generous layer of Howard's Feed and Wax to moisturize that wood and add a little bit of lubrication for um, gliding in and out of the cabinet. One last little touch I did is I pulled out my IOD stamps. These are really fun. This particular stamp is called Typeset Stamp and it is a copy of a vintage typewriter font. The numbers are really cool. Since these drawers were already numbered, I decided to just refresh that by adding these cool numbers to the back to make them a little more visible and cohesive. They're really easy to use. You just pull off the stamp and use it with these ink pads. This special IOD ink does not need to be sealed. It will seal by itself over time. And it just gave it a, a nice little touch. You know, they're a lot more visible now. I went with this hemp oil beeswax punching balm to seal the paint because sometimes when you're sealing dark colors and using a liquid top coat, you can end up with a cloudy effect. Using a product like this with a hemp oil base in it, which is going to harden over time, is kind of a foolproof method when sealing these darker paint colors. I wanted to say thank you so much for coming along another furniture transformation with me. For everybody who left me a green heart in the comment section of my previous video, you guys know who you are. Thank you so much. It just brought me so much joy to see all those hearts and feel so much love. You guys are awesome. So are you guys ready to see what this piece looks like now? Let's have a quick reminder of what we started with.
already packing Come with me, I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away, this is what we waited Yes, very distinguished. Mm-hmm.